go. Let's go. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another Vet of You episode. This is episode 20. We're, we made it. We're at 20, man. And our guest is Jose Martinez, right? Do you want to tell the people who you are, brother? Yeah, my name is Jose Martinez. I'm a triple amputee Army veteran. I was here in Afghanistan in 2012, uh, March 3rd to be specific, 2012. Um, I woke up 10 days later uh, after scaring the doctor and telling them that, hey, I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> how do we? Is that how, how you woke up? Now? Yeah, uh, oh, I woke shit. up 10 days later um, scaring the doctor, and uh, they had already told my unit that I was done. Like, they, I wasn't gonna survive and i was actually just talking to one of my boys that got hurt with me mm -hmm. uh yesterday and wow. he told me he's all like bro i saw you die on the fucking chopper twice wow and it's it's crazy because i i literally recall everything that happened i i can tell you specifically what i said to specific people and what had happened throughout the whole time and stuff like that and um but we'll, we'll, besides we'll get, that, we'll get yeah. into that, dude. Besides like, we'll get that, um, I'm not just a triple MPT Army vet. I'm also um, third in the world now as a prone to adaptive surfer um, for the Paralympic surfing team, still representing Team USA. And um, all I do now is live and try to inspire people to live their best life. Uh, I go out hunting, fishing. I do archery, mouth tap shooting, uh, all yes. kinds of that's stuff awesome. that the stuff that the doctor told me I'll never be able to do is I'm just showing the rest of the world that anything is possible, even with just a little adaptability, you know? Yeah. I mean our ling our lingo is adapt and overcome. Yeah. That's a that's an awesome mentality to have, especially, you know, I mean not only in your situation but just in general, you know, like if you if you are feeling like you can't or you can't do this and you can't do that. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people that I encounter all the time. They're like, wow, like you do this and you do that. I can't do that. And where I tell people is, please don't ever say I can't. Yeah. You know, the minute you say I can't, you speak it out into the world and then the world hears it. And guess what? The world's going to make it impossible for you to be able to do it. Yeah. So once you put it in your mentality, the hey, I can do it. I mean, I woke up after 10 days and I asked the doctor, I'm like, okay, I know I'm all beat up, so how do I walk again? And I mean, doctors are doctors and they gotta be realistic with you, right? Right. And they're like, well, Jose, since you're a hip disarticulate and I am, what that means is I'm actually missing everything past my butt cheek on my right side. So I don't have anything past my butt cheek. Damn. It's just literally a, a hip. Wow. That's on there. Yeah. And it's held by uh, metal as well. So <laughs> oh, I'm all, yeah, dude, it's all crazy. I, um, they did put it this way. It was so crazy that they had to take pictures of me and they did research on the doctor that ended up putting me together because it worked so well. Wow. No. Yeah. Way. Like, so my booty out there's, pictures of my butt somewhere out there as a triple amputee so if anybody sees it please send it over yeah send it over to me please <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would like to see how beat up i was when i first got hurt um so i, I ended up asking the doctor and the doctor told me you know what jose there's probably a 98 percent chance you'll probably never walk again in your life wow. you know and you're just probably going to be in the wheelchair for the rest of your life and i i just remember kind of that being like the tip of the iceberg for me for for everything else that you know that i'd encountered i mean to be honest with you i was more mad that i didn't die if that sounds crazy you know no i, I can see i can see like i can see why you would think that way because you know i was gonna ask you like how how did that even make you feel like did it just make you feel like why am i even here you know like what's yeah. the point now you know what so when i woke up i remember automatically looking to my left because I, I felt like if someone's staring, you know, when someone's staring at you mm -hmm. and you can see, I, that's the first thing that I felt. So I looked over and that's when I saw my family. I saw my brother, my mom, my dad, everybody crying, you know? Yeah. And when I saw that, I looked up again and I remember just closing my eyes and saying, please, 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 please take me back to Afghanistan, please. And then that's when I tried to get up acting like I was in my cot, you know, acting wow. like I was in my bed, like I, 
And the minute I did this, I felt that there was everything else missing. And I felt that I had no muscle, no strength to get up. And that's when I looked down and I'm like, fuck, it wasn't a dream. You know, it was reality. And when that hit me, it was just, it wasn't heartbreaking because I'm not going to lie to you. When I was in Afghanistan, my, I was going to die out there. Yeah. My plan was to die out there um, so I can be a hero. So they can tell my mom, like, hey, you know what? Jose did amazing. He was a great soldier, and he did the best for his country, And but he's he's gone, you know? Yeah. Because I'm, I, I was, I'm from Compton. I was born in Compton. I'm from Los Angeles. Like, I, I had an alcoholic father, an abusive alcoholic father. Uh, he left me and my mother pregnant when I was five years old. I didn't really ever have a chance to... I didn't grow up with that father. I didn't, I don't know what that feels like, to be honest with you. I don't, I see kids that say, oh, like I have a, I have a Nova because that's what my dad used to work on. I, I, I don't know what that feels like. You know, I, yeah. I don't, the best thing I can tell you is that I had a godfather, I had uncles, and then I had an amazing stepfather that stepped in, in between all that when I was around six or seven, you know? And that's that's probably the only thing that kept me from really going off the deep end it was that I would see that there's actually people that cared. Right. So when I was going to Afghanistan and all this was going down, I was like, man, my life can't get any worse, you know? So yeah. I, and it's not going to get any better ever. Like I'm Hispanic. Like I'm not going to have any doors opening up for me. Like I'm, I'm an infantry man. What the f- what, yeah, what, what are, gonna what are you going to get offered? Yeah, what yeah. are they going to offer me, you know? So my train of thought was in order for me to stop causing havoc here in this world, you know, because it, bro- it breaks my heart knowing that I, was, I wasn't I was the greatest human being, knowing that my mom came to this country to find a better outcome for her family, you know? And I'm over here being a fucking dumbass, being a bad to society and thinking that I'm entitled to everything, you know, because... I had a bad hand dealt with. Yeah. And so my thought process is, man, instead of keeping her, keep hurting the world, like, um, let's just go and die. Fuck yeah. It, you know? And man, sign up, no right? Problem. So yeah, like, let's do this. You is know? that what, is no that, problem. is that what, like, got you to join the military? You were just like, fuck it, like, let's just. I was, so I, at a high school, I graduated a whole semester earlier. I was pretty smart. My mom, the key with my mom for taking care of me was before she would drop me off to school, she would always be like, please, Jose, don't do anything I wouldn't like. And please do not do not do drugs. So throughout my whole time, all the way through high school, that kept in my mind. And I just wanted to make sure that I at least I gave her that much, you know, and after I got hurt, I is just so painful to to think that, you know, why, why am I still alive? Like, why, why, why do I need to continue with life? Right. It doesn't make sense, you know? Why am, not only am I in pain now, but I'm mentally messed up as well from all the stuff that I had already seen from all the stuff that I had encountered throughout my whole life. So my thought process was, man, Hopefully within a year and a half of all this, like, I don't even think I'll be able to make it past the, um, past all these doctors. I didn't think I was going to make it out of the hospital, to be honest with you, you know? Yeah. And gracefully, I, people weren't going to give up on me. They weren't giving up on me. You know, my unit found out that I was alive. So they all started calling me randomly, dude. Really? I would hear stuff in the background and be like, yo, you guys good? And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody slowly, yeah, dude, motors coming in, all yeah. kinds of crazy shit. And, but slowly everybody just started calling me. And um, at the time I had a girlfriend, which now she's my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, we were writing letters to each other and we were talking to each other the whole time and she found out that all of this happened. Um, I ended up being in Walter Reed Podesta after I got injured, which is all in the East Coast. And since I'm a West Coast kid, yeah. I asked them, I'm like, hey, can you guys just send me on to the West Coast so I can just continue to see my friends and family, you know? 
Right. And they're like, yeah, we'll fly you over. So they flew me into the Naval awesome. Medical Center in San Diego. And that's when I met my first brother as an amputee, I guess. Cause, um, and it was uh, Quevedo. You know, Jeffrey Quevedo. Shout out to Quevedo, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, I remember him saying, like, don't even worry about it, man. You're going to be all right. And he said, look at me. Yeah. All messed up. I can hear out. him saying it, too. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was hilarious because I looked up at him. I didn't even care for the sergeant. I'm like, that's up. We're going to fucking make it happen, man. Yeah. You know? So after I got injured, man, I... Of course, I hit my depressional state. I was trying to figure out why. I remember to the point where I I just sat in one corner one day and I just started crying. You know, I let it all go, and I even to the point where I was I was saying like, why didn't I have a father growing up? You know, yeah. why 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 did my family have such a hard time? You know, like we were poor. There was times where we didn't even have enough to eat sometimes. You know, and it it just it was all coming down and breaking down, and I started understanding one thing throughout it all is that that wasn't my fault that it was just the hand that I was dealt with, right you know that um i unfortunately, I had a fuck like an ace on one side, but then I had a three on the other, which made no sense, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, what do I do here? So I, and I didn't know how to play the game as well. Like I, now I'm starting to slowly understand that life is just a game, man. That's all it is, man. Yeah. It's literally whatever you decide it wanted to be on that day, you know? And if you play it that way, you're going to play it right, you know? So I, I remember crying and just beating myself up, just telling myself like I'm worthless, that I'm stupid, you know, like you're so dumb, you couldn't even go and die. That's how dumb I felt, you know? And I told myself that. And that's when I told myself wild. that, I started laughing, bro. And I started laughing. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm really retarded, you know? I couldn't <laughs> even get dying right. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I couldn't even get that right, you know? So oh, man. I, I I literally started seeing and started understanding why. Like, in a sense, I went into, like, a trance of just looking myself in the mirror through every single scenario of, like, every year of my life. And just seeing, like, okay, well, this happened because I didn't have a father because I was poor, because I was born. Like, it's not because I was making bad decisions. Right. It wasn't because I'm a bad human being. And the minute I started understanding that, it was like a snap, you know? And I started, I stopped asking the why me and, like, feeling bad for myself and all of that to, okay, like, fuck it. Let's do something. We're alive. Yeah, let's fucking figure something out. Like, why the fuck am I alive? Like, yeah. why why do I need to continue to live? You know? And I slowly started seeing, dude, my wife ended up meeting me, which was my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And a little backstory on this. Um, we had never actually physically seen each other. Oh, really? Never, never, never. So the, we knew that we were real because her best friend actually bumped into me while I was back in stateside. They give us a two week break right before we go and do all the crazy stuff at war. Yeah. They give you your two week break it's and like all vacation. that so you can go yeah, to go and say goodbye to your family or whatnot, you know. While I was out here, I was out with my best friend every single night and my best friend I guess was dating her best friend. Mm -hmm. And she ended up she's like, dude, I was drunk out of my mind every single day and she goes, You love my best friend. I'm like, She hot? And she showed me a picture of her and she's like, Yeah, dude, I'm like Sweet, give her my number. Like, just, yeah. just let her know that I'm leaving to Afghanistan. Like, I'm, you know, my yeah. thought process was, fuck it, I could talk to someone hot while I'm out there. You know, yeah, like, why not? Yeah. Why not? You know, it's not shit. Talking doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah. It's not, nothing's going on. You know, we don't even know about each other right now. So, right. we started talking um, throughout the whole time. We still had about a month and a half left of training. Mm -hmm. So throughout that whole time, I would just text her every morning. I would. Um, call her in the evening and stuff like that like i i would wake up before pt to go and run so i would call her like at 3 oh, in the morning yeah <laughs> dude I, I was crazy man i knew that i was gonna go and die but i was gonna give myself the best chance <laughs> uh, okay you yeah, were you yeah, were really getting after yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to just be like, oh, I'm going to fucking step on the bomb here. So, no, like, yeah. I was going to make sure my boys came back. Yeah. But I was also going to make sure that if it did go down, that some motherfucker, like, really wanted me done. Yeah, you they know? had to really that, try. Like, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was my thought process. I wasn't going to get anybody hurt. Like, that wasn't what I was looking for. Like, so please don't get it twisted, guys. Yeah. I was one of the best soldiers out there. Like Fuck yeah. for the same reason because I, I love my boys. My boys were everything to me. Like I didn't my family was broken. So when I got to my boys, dude, they all, I was one of the only Hispanics there. They renamed me from Martinez to Marty. And <laughs> <laughs> and they were just so awesome with me. Like to the point where my platoon sergeant would go and tell me like I was a dude, I was like fucking private. And he'll be like, hey, Martinez, go and get the, the sergeants, staff sergeants and all that. And I'm like, you know, I don't even have rank to go and do that, right? Yeah, he goes, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm telling you to fucking go and get him. Yeah. So I would get there, and they're like, what the fuck you want, Martinez? They're like, wait, push a position. I was like, fuck. Fuck. All right. Already? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Harris. said. You know, I started doing push-ups as I was talking to them. Yeah. But they were always fucking with me. It wasn't that they really wanted me to push or anything. They just, right. they always wanted to mess with me, you know? Yeah. So, um, we, uh, damn, blanked out. Where was I No, going? you were saying yeah. how, how you were doing, uh, how, how you would do anything for your boys. So you were always trying to be oh. as prepared as you could yeah. be, you know? So, um, always waking up at around three thirty four in the morning. I was always, uh, every day I ran at least 15 miles. Damn, dude. I just, yeah, I, the doctor told me when I woke up, he goes, you know, one of the main reasons you're alive is because of how good your physique was. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, wow. <laughs> you know, yeah, dude, crazy. he goes, that is, he goes, your body, the minute it got hurt, it wanted to heal instantly. Wow. That's what he told me. I'm like, dude, that's fucking nuts. I was like, this sucks though. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? Yeah. The benefits of being super healthy. <laughs> yeah. And it dude, kept it, you, you know, alive. alive. Still here. Yeah. So that's I would insane. always write to her. I would talk to her. And before I actually deployed, I wrote a letter to her. The night before I deployed, I wrote a That's letter awesome. to my girlfriend. Told her, hey, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen to this, but when I do come back, I'm going to come back to marry you. Yeah. And throughout the whole deployment, she would send me letters. She would write to me, send me pictures. She would, I would call her. She would be like one of the first people I would call. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, hey, because my brother knew I was dating her. So I'd be like, hey, just tell my brother that I'm good, you know? Yeah. So and she'd be like, "Yeah, cool. Don't worry about it." And um, the day before, even the day before the act, actually the day of the accident, right before we left, um, we had came back on the mission. And I told him, "My sorry, I'm like, hey, let me make a phone call real quick before we go out." Yeah. He goes, "Yeah, do whatever you need to do." I was like, went over, called him, like, "Hey, haven't talked to you in about two to three weeks. I miss you. I hope you're doing good. Damn. Just let everybody know I'm okay." Dude, two hours later, <sighs> boom! Damn. That's on the bomb. Um, so when we, they flew me over to, well, um, to San Diego, the Naval Medical Center, um, she found out and she was one of the first people to greet me there as well. That's awesome. After that day, she never left my sight. That's awesome, dude. That's, yeah, dude. That's great. I'm still with her to this day, eight years later, still going strong. Hell yeah, dude. That's, that's you know, it's real, you know, first one there, dude, especially when uh, you just got blown up in Afghanistan. So I want to, I want to kind of go back a little bit. All right. So we, we ended up on the, on the other end, but, um, so what, mo- what, besides like, um, the lifestyle that you had growing up, right? Like, was it, what is it that really motivated you to get into the military? Was it just a, a, an out of the community that you were in? Two things. Um, one. I had just lost my job when the recession had hit back mm-hmm. in 2008. So I was actually, a, uh, I was working for a staffing agency. I was a human resource manager in a sense. So I would do all the hiring, firing, the payroll, accounts right. payable, accounts receivable, pretty much run the whole thing for um, one section of what they, the big picture, you know? Right. And um, I ended up losing my job because they asked me for a diploma. And they're like, hey, you know, we want to continue to have you here. But since all this is going on, there's a lot of other people that are a lot more qualified. And I'm like, they can't be more qualified than me. Like, I'm, I'm good, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, no, well, we need, we need to have some paperwork saying that you are qualified, you know. So they ended up letting me go. 
and that's when pretty much I started causing a lot of havoc in my life. I uh, started drinking, started uh, just not making the best decisions of my life. Never got in trouble you. or anything like that, you know, but I just, I knew personally if my mom would know half of the stuff that I had done, I'd, I would be still on my knees, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, um, so it was just starting to get to me. Like, I knew the things that I was doing wasn't right, and consciously, I just couldn't even look at myself in the mirror, put it that way. Yeah. And um, I, the first place I ended up going to was to the Marines, you know? I'm like, man, they'll take me. They'll take any retard, you know? We'll just <laughs> fucking go or whatnot, you know? Yeah. And they're like, nope, we're not going to take this retard. We're going to take you. Yeah, I'm like, because what, what do you mean? They take everybody. And they're yeah. like, well, you got tattoos that represent uh, gangs and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, I was born in L.A. What do you want me to do? I have a Los Angeles tattoo on my, on my right side. But, yeah. dude, that's, I mean, I love L.A. That's where yeah. I was born. You know, and they're like, no, that's gang affiliated and this and that. I'm like, wow. whatever, sweet. Walk right across the door and then just walk over into the army. And they're like, sure, we'll take you. How fast do you want to go? <laughs> you know, it's, it's and, like dude, the I, opposite. I, oh, instant. Like, I'm like, all right, sweet. I was like, can I leave like in two weeks? They're like, whoa, that fast? I was like, well, I mean, nothing's really going on over here. I'm yeah. just wasting time, my own energy and my own space, you know? And I, I, I was starting to hate myself more and more every day, you know? I just didn't like the decisions I was making. Yeah. And I... It, it would have gotten really bad really fast if I wouldn't have left. Did you think and, that would be a good a good uh, a good way to kind of like basically kind of check yourself, you know, go into the military and then start? Yourself? Well, you know what? So when I was in this, when I was working for the staffing agency, I was making really really good money, and it's because I got a little bit of money and I was taking care of myself. My head got really 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 big, um, you know. So um, the way I looked at it was. If I go into the military, guess what? At the bottom. They're, they. Uh -oh. oh, you know, like anything. Can you go back <laughs> to where you said guess what? It's because so, it kind of froze up a little bit. When I looked at it, it was I'm gonna put myself in the. Oh, sorry, no worries. Um, so when I figured out that if I go into the military. And I could put myself in a hole. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't going to make a lot of money. Right. So my head couldn't even be big anymore, you know? Yeah. So what do I have now? Absolutely nothing but myself. So I figured out that maybe it can bring structure to my to my life. Maybe it can just remind me of, like, the importance of certain things in life, you know? Yeah. So I started, when went back to, started exercising in the morning because that's what the military does, you know? Right. You wake up, you got to take care of yourself first, and then you can go in and take care of everything else, Right. you know? So I figured if I can just get away from all the stuff that I'm so used to, from all the people that I'm so used to, from everybody saying, oh, yeah, like, let's go and party, or yeah, let's fucking just go and have fun or whatnot, and, you know, get away from all of that and go into something that I don't know, something new, mm -hmm. something that I have to either be quick on my feet or else I'm going to get left behind. Then I figured it would probably start giving me a better life or at least a sense of hope that I can be a little bit better for myself right. or for my mom, you know. And that was pretty much the main the mentality over it because everybody's like, dude, you went from making a lot of money to absolutely making nothing. Like, yeah. Well, yep. it doesn't pay very well. You know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't pay anything, you know? Yeah. So, but that was the best case scenario for me because then it brought me back down to what I knew. I, I was always poor. It's not like I was always hot shit, you know? Yeah. It's not like I've ever been hot shit. So once I started understanding, like, dude, like, I was just getting in over my head because I finally had a little bit, yeah. but didn't understand how to use it, you know? So hey, I felt like... Right? Yeah, absolutely, because I was so abusive with when I did receive it that, you know, it wasn't meant for me. Yeah. So I figured if I could just get brought down to the earth and remind me that someone could yell at me and I can't yell back, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it does a good job at making you earn everything that they give you, too. It's not, yeah, it's, it's oh, not handouts, you know? know? 
and, and the best thing it did was build structure for me. Like it reminded me of the things that I had to, in order for me to be able to take care of everything else, I had to be able to have myself on the spot on, you know, or else I couldn't be able to do that. Right. So, and I've, I've taken that with every aspect of my life now, to be honest with you, because I mean, I, this is what I tell people when you get depression, it's not like that shit just automatically disappears and no. you're, you're all better, you know, or every day is a different, is a different battle. There's days where you're going to feel absolutely amazing mm. for months on end. And then there's going to be a random day when it just hits it's, you yeah. and you're like, what the fuck? What's wrong with me today? Like, why do I feel so low? Like, why do I feel so down? Yeah. You know, but if you start off your day with trying to at least exercise or meditate, taking care of yourself first, guess what? Those days could become less so better, and less better. and yeah, absolutely. So That's you okay. have way less bad days when you're taking care of yourself right at the beginning. Because, I mean, when you start off with you, then you got to take care of everybody else. By the time the night hits, you ain't got to worry about no depression. You don't have to worry yeah. about, you know tomorrow you don't have to worry about what happened in the past you are literally just living in the present and just taking care of the things that you want to do you know so that's what I, I try to tell people is that the military has helped me with so much structure in my life that I, I have the ability to help everybody that I can because I'm able to see people that are in pain because I'm, I'm actually aware of my surroundings because I'm constantly trying to help those others just like i mean when you sign up for the military in a sense you sign up to be a guardian mm -hmm. and when you leave the military that feeling never leaves you yeah you know and that's what i tell people is that you're going to constantly want to protect and help those around you and that's absolutely great but make sure you're taking care of yourself first yeah. Remember, like they say in the airplane, you got to put your mask first. Yeah, before so you, you give can it put to everybody. Else. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's so right. you got to make sure that you're feeling at it the best you can. You know, so I think that's I, easy. I, to, I think that's an easy thing to forget, man. I think it's an easy thing to want to be able to help everybody else, but really not focus on yourself. Because if you're helping other people feel good, you're like, it gives you a little bit of that feel good but yeah, you still absolutely. you still neglect yourself and your and your health i think that could be an easy thing to, to yes definitely yeah. you know and that's what i've i figured out because i thought that um because i'm hispanic i would never get depression you know Dude, like that I doesn't know. exist yeah. you know like it doesn't exist in our world like you're just man up you're good mm -hmm. you're fine you know that's what normally they would tell you but to be honest with you um it comes in all forms, shapes, and sizes. There's times where something can just trigger you and be like, oh, like, I, it, it hurts. Things hurt, you know? Um, yeah. But I continue to see that if we try the best every single day and just worry about what's in front of us, the task that's in front of us, and try to not worry about the past, and, I mean... If you're in the present, you don't really have to worry about the future because technically you're working on the future right now, now right? Yeah. 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 So I, that's what I tell people. And they're like, that makes total sense. I was like, yeah, that's a pothead moment. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's how, how it go, that's how it goes down for me. So I've, I've understood that um, slowly. You can help others. I mean, not not every day is going to be your best day. So yeah. what I tell people is just try to help those when you can or when they see that they need help. You know, the best the best case I can explain to you is people come up to me constantly all the time and ask, hey, Jose, you ask for help. Um, do you need some help? I was just at the VA. Perfect example. I was just at the VA on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I was I, I have a big truck when I go. I surf. So I, I went surfing right before I like, had my appointment and came awesome. back. I was jumping around my truck all around it, and I was about to pull out. I actually, I was already done with the VA stuff, and I was about to put my wheelchair into the truck. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman runs over to me, and he goes, sir, do you need some help? I'm like, absolutely. And then I started asking him, like, how are you doing, sir? How's your day going? And he goes, well, not so great. And when he said that, I was like, wait. 
well, I mean, it's a lot better now. You're helping me, aren't you? And yeah. he looked up at me and smiled. I was like, yeah, see, you, you're, you're doing good, sir. As long as you got to keep charging, we're, we're fine, you know? Yeah. And he, That's awesome, dude. I, I was hopping around in one leg, and he looked at me, and he wanted to start crying. I'm like, it's okay, sir. I was like, I'm still here. We're, we are both still here, and we still have the ability to help each other out, just like you helped me. Yeah. And, dude, he started bawling out of control. Really? It was much, much older dude, yeah. And he started bawling out, and I, I, it just reminds me of how, how connected we are and how easy we can uplift each other. Yeah. You know, like I, he, I was having a, a day of my life, dude. I had caught some amazing waves. Like I was, I was feeling amazing, you know? Yeah. So I, I saw an opportunity for me to be able to uplift another vet. Dude, any chance that we get to do it. I mean, that's what life is about. Dude, We're that's awesome because your, your reaction could have like completely thrown that, that encounter off. Oh, absolutely. Completely. And I would have never have known, you yeah. know, I've been like, no, sir, I'm fine. Like know? I'm good, but you I, know? Yeah, I, I, what I said was, fuck it, today I get some extra help. Like, <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's like a, that's, that's such a positive outlook on things. Like, you have, you have such a positive attitude. And just not even thinking, like, no, like, I'm okay. Like, I can do this myself. And you, you allow this guy to help you. And that just helped him. You know, like, it's just. Oh, dude, he's, he looked like he, wanted, he was smiling after that. Like, nothing was going to mess with him. I'm like, God, oh, thank you. Like, that's Another all we one. want, you know? Just add it up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all it's all we ever want. I mean, dude, I got hurt, but that doesn't define me. Like every single time someone tells me, like, "Oh, send me a little bit about yourself." To be honest with you, I don't even want to start off with. I'm a triple amputee army veteran. Right. Um, my name is Jose Martinez. I'm a Paralympic adaptive surfer. That's how I would want to start. But of everybody course. always wants to. They're so curious that I have to start off like that, you know, <laughs> which is fine, but I don't ever want to define myself. Oh, I'm just a, you a combat wounded obviously. vet, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, look, that's a job we had in the past. Mm. That was someone we were then. Yeah. Doesn't mean we're, we're, we're changed or we're different than any of that. If anything, we just have more knowledge and we know how to, how to carry ourselves a bit better now. You know? Yeah, there's a different that, experience like there's a different chapter of experience added to your to your life. resume in a sense yeah, yeah you know yeah. and that's that's what i tell people and and to this day all i can ever do or all i ever want and i've understood now that i'm here just to make people smile just to make people understand how easy it is like yeah because i i love hearing like oh he could do it i could do it yes yes you're absolutely exactly. fucking right you got it you know <laughs> And I, I don't want ever, people to ever think like, oh, well, I can't go and talk to him because my story doesn't resonate with him or, or my story isn't as big as him. No, like my story is not more important than somebody else's, you know, like I, I will never want anybody to ever think that way. I, I feel like we all have absolutely very unique stories. Yeah. And if we don't hear our stories, how are we ever going to learn from each other? That's how right. are we ever going to know what we like? How are we ever going to know what what truly moves us and how to be motivated, you know? Yeah. So I, I love to hear people's experiences and, and what they have done for themselves, you know? Because mm -hmm. some things that I've never thought of, somebody said, hey, have you ever thought of doing this a different way? I'm like, no, but thanks, but thank you know? You, yeah. And that, yeah, and that never, ever hurts. Like, that feels absolutely good. And and walking around this earth and going around my business, I realized that there's a lot of older gentlemen that are really, really mad because they're in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I'm still here on this earth just to remind everybody, like, nah, there's just some grumpy ass old man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's just some grumpy guys who just don't don't want yeah. to put in a little bit more of the effort that it requires to. Uh... Absolutely, you know, because I mean, if you, I feel like if you're grumpy in that sense, then. I feel like you have some internal, yeah. you know, strains in you and stuff like that. I, I love everybody, bro. Like, people have asked me, do you hate the bad guys for doing this or whatnot? I'm like, I, dude, I don't even know the person that put it in there. Like, yeah. why, why do I, do, what hate do I have, you know? It wouldn't and make I, sense what, to hold any sort of hate when it came to that. No, and, and this is what I tell people. I was like, well, if that was your land and people were invading your world, what would you be doing? 
literally the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna knock someone for doing something that I would want. I'm. I'm here to protect my family, my friends, yeah. my neighbors. You know, I feel a lot of the world feels the same way about their world. You know, so yeah. I'm. I'm just another little small human being in this big, big spectacle like of the world. You know? Yeah. 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 You know, I, that's why I tell people, like, I love hearing their stories. I love, I love um, listening to everybody's different advices and stuff like that, because I feel like that's how we're going to continue to grow. Yeah, man. You know, that's, I mean, I, that's what I'm trying to do with the podcast. You know, like I'm trying to get everybody's, everybody's experience, because like you said, everybody's experience is unique, whether you saw combat or not, everything. Is yes. Combat. Yeah. And that's what I mean by in, in civilian or not. You know, like, that's what I tell people, like, whether you're a vet, whether you're a civilian, I feel like you, everybody has an amazing story. Like, now that I've, I've transitioned to just being the civilian and started exploring the world, I'm like, because I was in the ghetto, I didn't understand how amazing this world really is, dude. Like, I never knew you could get paid for guiding people to go out and hunt. Yeah. Dude, that means you get to walk around the forest. All day long, just to look for one animal, and if they get to hit it, cool. And if they don't, you still get paid. Yeah. What? <laughs> you you know, like stuff like that, dude. Yeah. Or, um, I met this gentleman that um puts up the zip lines in Colorado, and he's put up uh one of the biggest zip lines in Colorado. Oh really? Dude, yeah, so much money to be made there. I'm like, mind blown. And yeah. I and I tell people because I was. I was in the ghetto because I didn't know because I was raised in the LA Unified School District where there was adults that were teachers that didn't care about the kids. Sure. You know, that there's all kinds of things that were going on and any kid can tell you, Oh yeah, there's a specific teacher that doesn't like me. Every mm -hmm. single kid can tell you oh, that in yeah. this world, you know? Like and and it's not that they don't like the kid. It's honestly that they just don't like what they do. Yeah. And that's and that's the people that were raising us, me specifically, because I was in LA Unified School District. I'm sure with you it was the same thing. You know, you're getting taught by people that didn't even love what they did. Yeah. So this is what I tell people now in return. Imagine if we're walking around this earth feeling amazing every single day and everybody doing something they absolutely loved and they woke up every single day to do that. We would be in Star Wars world right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'd <laughs> you know, be, we'd be flying through space. Oh, dude, we <laughs> we would see hovercrafts already. We yeah. would see all kinds of crazy stuff. But we're so worried about fighting each other. We're so worried about trying to be better than somebody else. Like, yeah, no one's better than nobody here. Just That's because you have a, you know, just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you're better. You could have a million dollars, but right now, if you're sick, you're poor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's the real truth. Everybody that's sick right now, like everybody's like, Oh well my money can buy this and buy that. Well not no. Right they're not gonna buy nope. <laughs> nope. They yeah. not even that. Like doctors aren't even taking anybody in right now, you know? Yeah. And that's what I tell people, like, so you wouldn't want your mental state of mind to be the best and your heart to be the best? I mean, that's that's the world that I'm trying to live in and I'm trying to leave this world a better place than when I came in here. Do you think you it's know, harder for people to face? Do you think because I feel like you, like you were saying earlier, it's like you, you, you let out all, all, all the, all the things that were kind of like haunting you or like that that caused you pain, right? Like your childhood, that you know, being blown up, Afghanistan, just in general, like your lifestyle. You let it all out at some point. Do you think that's what really helped you be able to open up and and be yes. happier? Because I was able to look at myself in the mirror and I was able to point out when I made. Um, a bad decision yeah. and I told and you would have you literally have to tell you sit there and tell yourself you fucked up yeah. you know and this is something that I've practiced um, ever since I've blown up every single time I'm absolutely sorry because of something that I did I speak it out loud because that means my brain is always going to remember that time yeah. so anytime that I'm about to do another stupid mistake just like I had done in the past it automatically snaps me back Tricks saying, back, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, you know, and I feel like people have the hardest time looking themselves in the mirror and saying, I fucked up here, I fucked up here, I fucked up here, and I fucked up here. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that's on some true honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you keep pointing the finger at everybody else, it's a lot easier than pointing it at yourself, oh, right? definitely. 
Yeah, so I and that's something that I had to do was I had to see that I fucked up because I graduated a whole semester early from high school. If I would have been smart enough during my high school years and just not been like, oh, well, I'll do it later and I'll mm-hmm. be kept procrastinating, you know, I would have been accepted with a scholarship to a college. But since I didn't, I had to go to a Cal State University, pay for all my stuff, didn't have the ability to pay for it. Still needed to work. Still needed to take care of my family. Still needed to take care of myself. Damn. I just rollballed myself down. Yeah. So I caused all that. You know, I caused all that. And then I decided to do all this other stupidity in between there. And before I joined the military, that's when I started changing everything because I knew I had to. You have you to know? change yourself too. To yeah, I had to change yeah. it in order to be able to be successful in someone else because. If you still think you're this tough guy and you got this big old head and then the sergeant starts yelling at you and you want to just cock back and swing, it ain't going to happen for you. It's not going to work out It's well. not. No, yeah. no. Because yeah. you already signed a contract saying, hey, I'm going to abide by your rules and whatnot. Yeah. And when I don't, I, you can do whatever you want to me. Yeah. Throw me in a cage. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You're signing so, your rights away. It's all it's absolutely. basically what you're doing. And so... I mean, I knew that that was a, a probably the best case scenario for me because I wasn't going to be that human. Yeah. I was I I was tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting to this day. I don't I don't fight anymore. Yeah. You, don't you want know, to deal I, with avoid, that. <laughs> I avoid I avoid drama. Put it this way, I avoid traffic. That's how that's how much <laughs> drama free I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I avoid traffic. Yeah. Either I wake up super early or I wake up super late. Like it's it's. One or the other, but it's I I will avoid any type of negativity to the best case scenario, especially if it has nothing to do with me. Right. You know, like and you can and avoid it. Oh, absolutely. Like why why do you want to feel this nasty gut feeling in your stomach, you know? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to just feel joy and be happy? Yeah. You know, and that's but I feel like a lot of us are stuck in that trauma that Definitely. We feel an adrenaline rush every single time there's a scenario where we get to like want to fight someone or mm-hmm. something like that, you know, where we get a chance to lift up our voices and yell a bit. I feel like some people are actually looking for that and they I don't think, understand that they're they're a ticking time bomb. I think it's hard to get. I think uh, for a lot of not every service member, but I think for a lot of service members, it's hard to turn that thing off. I think it's hard for oh. Uh, for when you get Absolutely. out, because you can deal with things a lot. You know, you can deal with things a lot differently in the military than when you get oh, out. Oh, yeah. You can be like, yo, motherfucker. Like, you yeah. can just go in, you know? And nobody will go look Technically, you over. could get into a fight, and as long as no one says anything, you're good. <laughs> no yeah. one knows. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. What happened to your face? I fell. Okay. Oh, yeah, I fell. Yeah. yeah. And why is the other guy messed up, too? He, oh, fell, too. he fell with me. Yeah. <laughs> He tried catching me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, definitely. And I think because we know that, and it's just, and not only that, I've got to say this to civilians, uh, but everybody in general in the world, I feel like a lot of us are super selfish. And a lot of the veterans that do have a hard time transitioning that that intensity into some love, it's because they see how much the world doesn't really care. I think so, too. You know, you know that, and, yeah. that's, and that's something that I've tried to tell people, okay, don't look at those humans. Look at the humans that do care, like your children, you yeah. know, your, your, your niece and nephew, your family, mm-hmm. your friends, your brothers, mm-hmm. the people that care for you, you know? And, and I will say that. And I, even me, to this day, I have the toughest time sometimes because I see people being so selfish. And it makes me, it makes me really question myself, like, do I really want to be doing this for people that don't really care? But then I do have those people that in return saying, Jose, like, you helped me when I saw you back then. And look at me now, you know, and that's the reason why I never stop. And I will never stop to this day, because there will always be humans that, that need that motivation, that inspiration, that just needs an uplifting that needs a hand yeah you know so i'll never stop doing what i we're going to continue to save the world and we're definitely going to leave it a better place than where we came here you know and i know the things that you're doing things that i'm trying to do the things that all of us are um coming together and trying to just help each other out and just 
just by just telling our stories. We're not really doing much. You yeah, know? just telling your story, <laughs> your experience, how you dealt with your things and how you overcame them and how somebody else could do it, you know? That's it. Absolutely, you know? And, and that's what I tell people that it's... Life is a lot easier when we stop being selfish and we start realizing that we're all connected and we need each other. Yeah. In order for this world to continue to survive the way it's... I don't know if you've seen the last kind of like 100 years, we've gone from having a, a typewriter mm -hmm. to now having this phone. This computer. And that's only... Bit, yeah, like and that's the last, what, 100 years maybe? Mm -hmm. So we're making strides and jumps strides. that people haven't made, but I mean, if we can't come together and if we can't love each other, then what's the whole purpose of it? Yeah. Why get you all know? this good stuff if we're still well, just not if getting, we, if, if we're just we're still having, conflict? Yeah. If we're still in the same troubles that we had when we first started off in this world, you know? So, and that's, that's the crazy part about the vet community that there's so many different types of races, humans, like mm -hmm. all kinds of beings in there that, you can't be racist in there. I, I, you don't have time for that, you know? It's too many. They'll talk yeah, shit, absolutely. but that's it. Oh, yeah, yes. But that's us being brothers and sisters, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. part of the community, you for know? Sure. So, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, dude, like, how is it that in the military, we can all live together, like, peacefully and fine? And I'm speaking for myself because that's who we were. We were all able to get along with each other. To this day, if I still see anybody from my company... Hey Martinez, how's yeah. it going? You know, like every single time, like and and I love that that feeling, you know, the fact that you're like, oh, that's my brother, yeah. and then people are like, for real, that's your brother? I'm like, yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, because you can pick it up even if you haven't yeah, spoken absolutely. in a while. You just talk to them and boom, immediately. You Definitely, know? you know. I think that's a that's a that's a connection that most people don't understand. I think um, it's 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 closer than family. It's kind of insane. Um, just because you go through all the all those all those struggles and difficulties with them, that you guys form this this insane bond. Um, when you were first enlisting, did you know that the about the war? Did you know everything that was going on? That there was potential for you to go over there? Oh yeah, I I I actually so after I was actually done with basic training, I told them I was like, hey, what unit's about to deploy? They're like, oh, Fort Lewis is. Let's go. Let's go there. Really? <laughs> Let's go there, yeah. Oh, I, shit. I'm telling you, I was I was just so wanting to get away as much as possible from all the bad stuff that I had done. In a sense, when I went when I signed up for the military, it was kinda like the beginning of washing all the bad sins away so I could start mm. from scratch, you know? That's kind of what I was in a sense trying to build. Yeah. Um how it worked out, I'm not really sure, but at least I, I can say this out, much. Man. Yeah, it, I can say this much. I will at least be able to see the gates of heaven. You yeah. know? <laughs> I can say that much. Yeah, twice in a helicopter. <laughs> oh, definitely, exactly. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, I knew, I knew everything that was going down. I knew that people were dying. I knew people were stepping on bombs. I knew people were coming back without limbs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember before we deployed, uh, all of us all the boys were just sitting around in a circle and just talking, you know, and they're like, yeah. Oh, Hey, um, if I get blown up from here down, just leave me there. Or if I get blown up from here, yeah. you know, like everybody was talking their scenarios. And I, I, I seriously recall specifically telling everybody if my legs get blown off, just fucking leave me there guys. Yeah. And they're like, they looked at me like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, you know, I run a lot. And they're like, ah, oh, makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So when I did blow up, I remember grabbing my boys and I'm like, remember I told you, you're going to leave me here. If my legs are gone, Whoa. Like, shut up, Martinez. <laughs> when, it, when it happened, you actually told him? Oh, dude, oh, I, I remember telling him everything. I was like, dude, just fucking leave me here. I told you. My legs are blown off. Just fucking let me die. Wow. Did you, not, did you not get knocked unconscious when it happened? Nope. Wow. So you fucking everything. I, I rem yeah, I remember stepping on. So I remember running towards my brother. He had just stepped on the toe popper. Okay. And I I ran towards him after I I heard him screaming and yelling, you know, that he was in pain. So um, What's a tail popper or toe popper that you that you 
just a small bomb okay. pops off your toe or your oh, ankle okay. normally okay yeah that's what we call them toe popper, toe popper makes sense. <laughs> yeah right yeah so um after dust settled and then he had stepped on his i heard him scream so i i mean what are you supposed to do you gotta go for your guy you know friend, yeah i remember i actually remember looking down and he had a mind hound because he was the one he was a, a on top so he was on the first person making sure everything's good you know mm -hmm. i remember looking down on his boot steps and i'm like shit i'm gonna just take his boot steps like that's the only path we know yeah i remember taking six steps and on the sixth step my right leg just ignited Whoa. a primary a primary id um i think it sent me flying about 10 feet up in the air landed oh. head first um my arm was attached but broken so i guess it was just hanging so was, um my right leg was completely fucking obliterated and my left leg below the knee was about that much and it was the same thing dangling uh, my boys my boys jumped on top of me instantly started closing me up um tourniquets all over the place and i was still actually bleeding um that's when they realized that I had internal bleeding from the inside because my rib cage had opened up. So I had opened up my whole inside of my intestines. Um, one of my sergeants, Sergeant Hector, saw one of my vessels, my blood vessels, just going out, and he ended up pinching it. And when he pinched it, that's when I told everybody, that's it, fucking leave me here. That's, that I'm done. This pain is too much. Oh, like, was, was it like ridiculously fucking, painful? Oh, dude, I was fucking pushing everybody the fuck off. Like, um, dude, it was insane. Did the but, adrenaline not kick in and immediately try to like numb any of it, or was it just like still? Hell no, hell no, no, dude. There's so much fucking pain. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, no, I, just, I, I just, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, well, this is the thing, so. Right when they jumped on me and put all the tourniquets in me, that's when I told them, I was like, dude, I can't breathe. Like, So my lungs were expanding, but they were decompressing. So something was clogged in. I think it hit one of my, um, I think my one of my pulmonary um, vessels, mm -hmm. and it stopped me from decompressing. So oh. I told them, I was like, dude, like, I'm, I can't fucking breathe. Yeah. So they were shooting, they were like punching me with needles. I don't know if the collarbone needle, I don't know what that one's called. Mm -hmm. The one where they open up the um, the, the airway, mm -hmm. stuck that one in me. They stuck the nasal pharyngeal under my fucking nose and everything. Dude, it was wow. extreme. And when they were doing all that, they finally popped my collarbone and everything decompressed. And that's when I'm like, oh, fuck. Wow. And it, it like kind of dazed me. Yeah. But then when they grabbed my fucking, uh, my blood vessel, dude, that's when everything just started kicking in again. That's when I was trying to push everybody the fuck off. And everybody's like, shut up. You'll be fine. <laughs> shut and, up. You're good. Yeah. You're okay. I promise you're yeah. good. Man. So they ended up, uh, they ended up calling the nine line and just, uh, choppers came down, picked me up. Both me and my boy were in the chopper. And that's when he said that, um, I died twice in the fucking helicopter. I do remember that. I remember someone hovering on top of me saying, we're not going to lose you, Martinez. You're going to be fine. And I remember saying, I'm in so much pain. Fucking help. Yeah. You know, I do remember that. Jeez. That is, that's, that's fucking insane. That's, it's crazy that you remember that whole process. Did you, did yeah. you just like pass out and then you woke up in the hospital 10 days later, you said? Um, I passed out. After my platoon sergeant had gotten hurt a day before it, actually, like, maybe a couple hours before I did, and he was over there. Oh, wow. So he heard, he heard chatter, but, I mean, they had, they just had to go and do testing because every time someone goes through an IED, they got to do a bunch of tests and stuff right. like that. And he heard chatter of what happened, and I remember him pulling the white sheet off of me, and I remember him crying. And I specifically remember his tears dropping down onto my cheeks. And that's when I just, I felt calm and relaxed. And I felt like I, w I was okay. Really? Did it feel yeah. like sleep? What did it feel like? Have you ever gone under to get some type of little surgery or something uh -huh. like that? Yeah. You know that little right just before you close your eyes, just a little daze? Fading? That's, 
Yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. Wow. Hmm. And you know, I was yeah. I forgot I was talking to somebody about it where it's like I wonder if dying feels like going under, because you just kind of go and you just don't you don't feel it, you don't anything. know yeah it's just exactly, and then yeah I ended up waking up ten days later. Damn. And you and before so before this whole thing happened before you. Um, before you deployed, when you were going to deploy, what, what was your family and friends thinking? Were, were they super worried about you or anything like that? If you know me, you know you can't worry about me. <laughs> just like, uh, uh, yeah, he, I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, yeah. I, I used to ride motorcycles. I did, I was, <clears throat> I'm an adrenaline junkie. So, yeah, my mom was worried. She knew the possibilities of things happening and things sure. going down. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think they just didn't really think about it or they didn't think it would happen to me I guess was yeah. the best way they they really thought of it and um yeah, that's... I guess that's the best way yeah because even mom like when I told my parent, mom and dad I'm like hey I'm gonna go to the military they're like for real I'm like yeah I've been thinking about it made the decision I'll be leaving like in two weeks or so wow. and they're like okay my dad is a um, my stepdads are like, oh, the best thing I could tell you is just continue to take care of yourself, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. It's awesome that they weren't trying to, like, convince you otherwise to, like, stay or anything like that. No, 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 nobody. I, I've i always made my own decisions, stuff like that, and even if they were. But, I mean, no one – my mom didn't want me to go. So sure. she knew she didn't have a, a say in any of what I was going to do. So the only thing she told me is I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Yeah. Just take yeah. care of yourself, basically. Same yeah, thing. exactly. <clears throat> and and um, when when you guys were out, th now, now that you think about it, when you're out, do you think we were, we are, or we were over there for any of the correct reasons? Fuck, you know what? I don't even know what the fuck the reason was that we were out there, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I know this much. I know that if the wrong people were out there, then most of the people that were out there wouldn't be able to come back. So no matter what decision I made at the end of the day, I was taking care of someone's husband, right. someone's brother, mm -hmm. someone's uncle, you know, someone's cousin. And that's, that's, that's why I've always been able to sleep good at night is sure. because I wasn't out there to, I wasn't out there to try to kill somebody. Right. I wasn't out there to try, you know, I, I'm not here to fight no political wars. I'm not. Nothing like that. I just knew that this was going to bring structure to my life. I knew that we were at war because someone said they attacked us. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I saw it. Don't get me wrong. Right. But I, there's a lot of things I've seen on TV that I'm not, I know aren't, aren't real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I always go back to that. Like, I, I, I'm here to protect your brother, yeah. your cousin, your father, your uncle, your nephew. You know, that's that's what I was out there to do. And I think that's how a lot of people look at it, too, when they're over there. Because, like, I know when I was over there, it wasn't for anybody else. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. you know, it was just for my friends that were out there. If, if any of them needed help or if I needed them to watch my back while I'm, like, taking off my gear to go under a truck. And, you know, I would be like, hey, yeah. man, <laughs> please. Hook me up. Yeah. Hook me up, yeah, you yeah. know. Make sure yeah, we're no, all for here. Sure, you know. And and that's always what I told her. Like before we left, I told everybody, "I'm like, yo, we're gonna do our best to come back all all good, you know." Yeah. And uh, when you first uh, when you first got back, and did your unit get back? How long at, how long in like how long into deployment did this happen to you? And then when they got back, what were what was their reaction? Uh, I got hurt four months after my deployment. Four months, sorry. After the deployment. So I got hurt four months right when we got in to deployment. Oh, first. four months into the deployment, that's yeah. when it happened. Damn, that's mm -hmm. early on, especially for you army cats. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that that's another reason why I, dude, I felt like a failure when I got hurt. You know, I told you, I, I couldn't even die. Yeah. And yet I couldn't go out there and make it through the whole deployment. It, I mean, my boys were happy that I was, that I was alive and everything, but I didn't see anybody until three years after. Damn. Yeah. I didn't see, talk to anybody or nothing like that until three years after. I Besides it just being phone calls and, you know. Not even people. phone calls, I think. I think the year three is when we started all texting and 
calling each other because that's when a lot of us were getting into depression. A lot of us were really getting hit with, oh, fuck. Yeah. We did go through some shit, you know? So for me, it was more of I felt like I failed my my boys, you know? I was I was a machine gunner out there. I was the one taking care of everybody. I was right. the one making sure that everybody was good, you know. So when that when it went down, it was it was depressing because I knew I failed at something that I really 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 wanted to succeed at. Yeah. You know, and it took me all of three years to understand that none of it was my fault. I I would I wasn't blaming anybody. I, none of my boys, none of that shit. It was just all like my own. Your own fuck up, right? My own fuck up, my right. own fears, my own hatred, my own, my own everything, you know. And I just couldn't get past all of that shit. And gracefully, I one day just snapped out of it and said, Nah, like I can't live this way. If I'm feeling this way, I can imagine the people that saw me, the people that saved me, like. You know, I, I can't live knowing that I, I didn't make an effort to try and help them, right. you know, whether they needed help or not, or whether they just needed to see me and say, oh, okay, he's good. He's good, yeah. That's what, that's you what know? Cabello was saying, man. That's what he was saying when um, he got to go to their to their ball, you know, that he got, that was the first time that his team had seen him again. And from when they were saving his life, you know, working on him, yeah. um, he said that he was just there joking bullshit and trying to be like how he usually is but his whole team was kind of just staring at him like holy fuck you know and that he asked them like what the fuck's going on you know like why are you guys so quiet you know what's going on and that they were like dude we saw you die like we were working on you you know like this is this is like it's crazy to see you like this now you know alive yeah, yeah. like i can't even imagine your team that was working on you and when you guys started talking again i'm sure I'm sure a lot of those emotions were starting to come up and and then just reminiscing in like the whole PTSD and everything that they that they were dealing with. I'm sure that was all coming, especially three years later when they all got out of the army, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly how it went down. Yeah, a lot of them were getting out. Um, a lot of them were trying to find themselves, you know, but I feel like it. everything comes within time. You know, you can never rush anything. You can never rush healing. You can never rush the process of it. You know, and that's the best thing I could tell people. Everybody within their own time. I haven't, my boy that blow, got blown up with me, I haven't seen him. I just talked to him yesterday. Since then? Since then. Wow. That's insane. Because he felt like it was his fault. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, dude, did you put the bomb there? He goes, no. I was like, then what the fuck do you think you're going to see? <laughs> did you send yeah. us both to Afghanistan? Yeah. Um, like, okay. Yeah, 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 we're good. We're exactly. good, man. We're good. So, and that's what I want to tell people. Like, I've, I've, throughout this whole eight years of recovering and stuff like that, I've met so many people that they're like, oh, I wish I looked like you so people can really understand how much pain I've gone through. And the only thing I could tell him is, I promise you, you do not want to be in these shoes. Yeah. You know, you, you don't. Because it takes, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm in pain every day. Every single day I wake up, I'm in pain. And there's something that's aching, there's something that hurts, you know, something that's bothering. Gracefully, it's nothing mental anymore. Everything's just physical pain. But there's times where it, that physical pain overtakes everything, you know? Yeah. And during those times, it's just, you got to just learn how to relax and let shit go, too. I mean, what are you going to fight something that's in, inside of you? Yeah. That you it's, like you try, it's like you trying to fight the sun. That thing is powerful, <laughs> man. You ain't going to block that thing. Yeah, you know? no way. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell people. Like, everybody has their own trials and tribulations. Everybody has their own story. Don't ever wish to be someone else. Don't ever wish to, oh, I'd rather be like you or... I, I wish I could do the things that you do. No, and everybody has the ability to do anything in this life, yeah. you know? And that includes healing, that includes changing, that includes the mindset, you know? I mean, I, I've been waking up this last, like, two or three weeks, just 5, 4 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, just to go and work out. 
normally I go to surf at that time. I'm not a morning person to work out anymore. Not after the military, because yeah. why, why should I? Yeah, know? why should I? <laughs> but, but it feels really, really good to wake up early and get things out of the way, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I've just been trying to find different things and different ways to motivate not just myself, but the rest of the world. I started surfing for a living. Um, been competitively surfing for the last three years. Uh, won different awards. I'm officially third in the world as a prone uh, adaptive surfer. Um, I have started my own nonprofit organization to try to help other veterans in Washington State. What? No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta take give out me the name. Tape. What's the name of it? Absolutely. Four Season Fighters. Four Season Fighters. I'll have to. I'll have to get you. You have to send me a link. Yeah, I'll get. You, yeah, I'll send you the link. Uh, all we're trying to do is so just a little different from the normal um, veteran nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We're actually trying to take out first responder, policemen, firefighters, all the people that are continuously um, helping selfishly the community without yeah. ever getting. Uh, thank you or anything like that. So we started it to, as our way of appreciation. And not only that, um, I don't know if you know, but firemen are the second worst suicide next to the really? veteran community. Yeah, I mean, wow. if you think about it, they're they're the ones always going to all the calls, you know? Everything. First, yeah, everything, everything, everything. 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 And, and um, so I want to make sure that those guys get taken care of because yeah. I've heard a lot. My sergeant that um, was with me when all this happened, he's my best friend. Uh, he's the one that sent me on the mission, and he was the one watching me on the blimps, uh, watching me get blown up. Wow. Dude, yeah. That's, that's another person that I didn't talk to for three years, and he was on an alcoholic rampage too because he, he didn't get to see me. We didn't talk or nothing like that. So for any of you vets that still haven't talked to your brothers, do Give them a call. Yes. Do it. Yes. Trust me. Yes. We love you guys. We yeah. need you guys. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. We, we depend you on know? each other yeah. heavily. We de heavily. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I promise you, we are still waiting for that phone call if you haven't made it yet. Yeah. You know, it has to come from one or the other. So don't wait. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. You know, so and he's a, he's a fireman now. That's so awesome. I yeah, he started losing some friends because of all the stuff that you know, firemen have to see. So both of us um, ended up going on a hunt together. And after that, we said, fuck, we got to do this shit for everybody else too. Awesome. You know, we got to help her in our own way. So um, that was the only little tweak that we made that we made it available to firemen, to EMTs, first responders, That's like great. police officers. Yeah. yeah and uh, the last two years we've been able to do it successfully last year we were able to take out um six amazing human beings i think two vets two firemen and two police officers if that's I'm correct. super cool yeah so I, we're just trying to trying to help how we've been helped yeah you know and trying to see and just trying to make it now a, a vet thing you know veterans taking out other veterans like yeah dude, dude I, I go out there and people are like you're the guy that running this with all these other dudes and i'm like yeah what's yeah, up guys yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, right. so I'm, you know? I'm just it, it feels really cool that like i'm part of something so awesome because it's four of us that started it together you know and dude we three of us are vets and the other guys are firemen but all of us are in the same boat together like we we try to help out as much as possible help each other out and yeah. in return We've got another people that have been helping us as well, you know. So we just want to continue to make a difference, you know. What you're doing, we're just doing it in a different form. Yeah, dude, and that's I guess, fucking you know, awesome. Yeah, because yeah, I want to yeah, have so. firefighters on here. I want to have, you know, first responders. Dude, I'll, again, everybody's story is so fucking awesome and different know, that it, you you just want to. You want to hear people's mm -hmm. different perspective, like For you sure. said, you know. And when we're out there and we're out hunting or we're out fishing or doing whatever we are, when it comes down to the end of the day and we all start talking to each other, we all start, we don't ever really say, oh, like, oh, I feel depressed or whatnot. But when we're out there, we start telling each other, like, you know what, man? I really needed this. Yeah, like, this is good. And, yeah, this is, and that is enough for us, dude. Our last vet that we took out, we took him out um, deer hunting. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, man, I love you guys. You guys don't get drunk the night before and then have to wake up all super early, like, all... <laughs> 
wasted and stuff like that. Yeah. We're like, nah, dude, like, we enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Like, yeah. we want to actually be able to feel good while we're doing it, you know? Of course. And, and he goes, you guys, I haven't hunted, like, in nine years. Next year, I'm hunting by myself if I have to. I'm like, yes. I was nice. like, we just want to make sure people get out, you know? Yeah. If you get out of your home, out of the little hole that you're so constantly used to, and get out and breathe some fresh air and get out in the sun, you know, feel the wind breeze, you know, yeah. feel like a kid again. Especially now. You know, oh, absolutely. It's so difficult, you know. Yeah. So we just want to make sure we continue on and just help each other. That's all we're here for, to help that's, each other. That's super cool. Do you guys come out here to Washington or do you guys host it in different locations? No. So um, my sergeant's actually located in Washington State. So we did it all there because I'm constantly going up and down the coast. No way. So I'm, I'm there like six to six to eight times a year. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, dude. dude <laughs> Last super... year I, w- I only made it up four times, but that's because of the whole coronavirus thing yeah, that's going definitely. on. Yeah, definitely. But... still kind of iffy, but yeah, yeah. we'll be yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. We, we stay healthy. That's so cool, man. That's 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 fucking awesome that you're doing something for first responders. I think they they deserve it, and I think there's more that should be done for them because um, I was just talking to somebody about it too, like. Firefighters see all kinds of shit, like Dude, ha- having to cut fuck- people out of cars, having to like, oh, like man, forest fighting. Dude, that that is insane. I had a wildland firefighter oh. on here. He was a oh, did you? Yeah, he was an army guy. Yeah, he was in Oregon. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was those guys have some crazy stories. Like my boy that start um, that started the nonprofit with us, mm-hmm. he was out doing uh, wildland firefighting last year in Washington when it got really bad oh, over bad. there in um, Brewster area. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know on the eastern side. Right. Um, he said that there's a mountain lion walking in front of the water tank. Dude, just because he knew he was safe there, he kept walking with everybody online. And he wasn't. I'm like, he wasn't dude, messing. And he with wasn't him. trying to kill. No, nothing, dude. Yeah, that is insane, huh? Wow. Can you imagine that? I would have recorded that shit, dude. Oh dude, my he goodness. had pictures and everything. Wow, <laughs> that is insane. That animal's thankful as fuck. Dude, it's crazy how the world works, man. It's crazy how the world works. That isn't, yeah. I mean, I mean, those pictures of, of those fires in Australia when the firefighters are giving water to, like, the koalas. The koalas? And they're just, like, oh, taking man. it, you yeah. know, like, man. It's nuts, yeah. That last year was insane. It was just, it, it, was, it was a mm-hmm. wild time to, to be alive on Earth. Absolutely. For sure. But um, when you guys, when you guys, when you got back in touch with all your buddies, right, who initiated that conversation and how did that start? Was it like, hey... Hope you guys are doing okay, you know? Uh, it was, if I'm correct, I think it was my platoon sergeant that saw me blow up. Oh, really? I, we all did the hunt together. So it was me and it was Sorry Names, Sorry Maggio, and Sorry Needing. Well, that's how you, guys went, up. you guys went hunting? We all went hunting, yeah. They took us out on the hunt. Um, a nonprofit took us out. Um, Veteran Sportsman Alliance is the nonprofit that took us out hunting, and they're based out of here in California. And they, um, they, they had taken me out hunting the year before, yeah. and I had told them like my story and everything. And I think he got in contact with um, my sergeant, and then they planned it out all together. And you know how sergeants are. Hey, we gotta be here at this time, blah blah blah. Yeah. So he did. He did one of those, <laughs> and that's how we ended up connecting with each other. And after that, it just constant. We haven't every year. We have to see each other every like. It's gotten to the point where it's more of us now. Yeah. So now we gotta we gotta get like a mansion now to all hang out and yeah. stuff like that. Big old Airbnb. Cause it, yeah, because it went from four of us to now it's like eight to twelve of us. Dude, that's so cool. And it, it, yeah. Dude, and now, now it's literally closing over two now. So, now it's, now it's what, so we're sorry? trying to just keep connecting with everybody. I said now um, it's pretty much getting close to where it's almost the whole platoon is getting together wow, now. So that's so cool. It's, yeah, it's slowly getting to that point, but it's 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 awesome, man. Yeah, I've been really talking awesome about it with be... my friends, too, like trying to get something and, and we could all get together and fucking... A hunt would be cool. I've never hunted in my life, but I wanted to so bad. It just seems so cool. Um, and I've been talking about it with my friends, and I just think that's something that could be beneficial for all of us, you know, just get together. Oh, dude, 
put it this way, even if you don't get anything, just being out there for three days, you're gonna be like, Oh, this is why. Yeah. You know? Oh, I bet. Trust yeah, I can yeah. I can imagine. You know, I'm sure it's just awesome being out there with your boys. Um and and did you already know that they were all struggling with shit when they reached out initially, or was that something? No, I thought every. I mean, by the looks of it, everybody had a career going on. Some they were, everybody had something going on. Right. So I we really didn't know, you know. They yeah. thought I was okay. I I was in the whole cannabis area because I I I was on like a hundred plus pills when I left the military, and. Dude, I couldn't live off of that shit. That Heart was making things. me, oh, it was making me suicidal. It was making me even more depressed. It was making me foggy. Like I, I couldn't think for myself, you know. Yeah. So I stopped taking all of that and just started smoking cannabis and I started growing it and that's all I was focused on. But I never really gave my time or myself or my mind the time to really decompress and heal. So. Right. When we all got together, I feel like everything just kind of started snowballing down and we all started letting our guards down and just eventually letting everybody know how fucked up we really were, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird how you, you tend to like, I don't know if you did this, but I know I did this when I was talking to my friends. I would just put up a face like, I'm good. Like everything's solid over here. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm living the life, the DD214 life. But, you know, when, when we eventually found out, it was like, dude, you weren't okay. Like, you weren't okay this whole time. And you, we yeah. never spoke about it, you know, till the first yeah, time no, on the when podcast. We, when we first got together, I mean, all of us kind of, like, told each other what we were on. Like, if we were taking something or, like, what was really happening with us. Um, so, I, it's, we were always super, like, I guess we were just always fucking around with each other. And we've all, we had such a strong bond that. We really looked at each other like brothers, so we weren't really judging, you know. Yeah. So when we did get together, it was it was a bit easier for us to finally decompress and be like, "Hey, this shit fucking sucks, huh?" Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> so that's that's how the conversation normally gets initiated. Yeah, it's not as good as you thought it'd be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange how how you, you don't think about it. Like you you never saying earlier, it's just you don't you don't think you'll ever get depression or you don't think you'll ever deal with that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think was some of the hardest things about like you transitioning back to this world, the civilian world? Understanding that civilians, not all civilians are the same. Yeah. Not everybody cares. Not everybody is gonna care. Not everybody's gonna care specifically about you. Mm -hmm. But everybody's gonna want to look at you and be nosy and see. Yeah what's going on with you instead of I had my biggest problems were always that people always wanted to stare at me but never talk to me you know or it was ridiculous enough to where people like I would be trying to hold the door for somebody or something yeah. and people would be jumping in I'm like dude I'm in a wheelchair like you guys just don't want to hold the door for yourselves like you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> or or I would get the door slammed on me when I'm trying to get out oh man it, <laughs> you know stuff like that like so i i started understanding like the world's just gonna That's just continue that, to this is, yeah, yeah it's just how it is you know yeah. but the people that really really care they're gonna come up to you and talk to you they're gonna come up to you and ask you if you want if you need some help if you want something so that was probably the biggest thing for me is understanding that not all not the whole world isn't all the same right they don't all care the same. They don't all uh, love the same. They don't all love you specifically the same. So yeah. I think that was one of the biggest and hardest things. And, of course, all the staring. I mean, of course, I'm a triple amputee. Like, it's, it's a thing that's going to happen. Does that get weird? But at times it does, dude, because when you have an adult staring at you for, like, <laughs> a minute plus you know how like when you could glance at something be like oh shit like yeah that's pretty cool or yeah. you know some shit like that like, like i wonder what happened but what, the, yeah but there's times where people are just like this like I'm like dude like you're about to crash into a human being like you yeah. know like uh, i'm still good like yeah, <laughs> yeah so that, that's one thing that i had to get used to or get over and but you want to know what made it easier children children, children will always come up to you yeah dude children will always come up to you and like hey what happened to you? Yeah. I'm like, thank God. Thank least, goodness you know, there's an adult in the yeah, house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? And and um, 
I always see like adults running to them, like, shh, don't ask them anything. I'm like, no, it's fine. Like, yeah. I rather them ask, and you automatically kill their curiosity, and then yeah. never want to ask curious. anything. Yeah, they're curious. Yeah, you know. So they're like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, dude, don't be doing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, let them be like they're kids yeah, you know they got questions you know? and and when you exactly. what do you do you do you kidify the the situation do you uh De- depends on the situation so like let's say if a kid's running around and then automatically stumbles and looks at me like oh shit yeah. i'm like you better listen to your mom i didn't <laughs> <laughs> stuff, stuff like that yeah yeah you know and they're like thank you thank you <laughs> i'm like yeah awesome. i got you yeah <laughs> so it's all it's all scenario based right <laughs> right um and uh, when 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 you finally realized, you know that that that's people aren't as patriotic as they as you think people are, because uh, that's what I kind of figured out. It's like, oh, not everybody's, not every, no. not everybody's no, no, no. like, oh, America, you know, not everybody <laughs> at all. Actually, there's a lot of um, a lot of I don't want to call it fake, you know, patriotism, but it kind of it's I guess it's it's kind of almost there. It's like uh, yeah. people say. You know, we support the patriotic, it. Yeah. yeah, and then when it comes down to it, it's like, uh, I don't think so. You know? <laughs> um, and I think one of the hardest things for, for me, at least, it was trying to figure out who I was, um, what what played, what role I was going to play out here, what what important job, you know, um, is it that I'm going to fill? Because you're getting out of a job that has some sort of meaning, right? Um, yes. Something that people look at and they're like, oh, shit, like you were in the Army, you were in the Marine Corps, you, like, you, you did, you've done something is what people think. Um, did you ever find yourself uh, trying to fill that void after getting out? Yeah, I always felt like I had to be somebody. Yeah. After even to the point where, like, I think like four years ago, I was like, "Well, I gotta go back to school because I have to be somebody." Yeah. And my wife saw like, "Hold, oh, hold up, calm the fuck down." <laughs> how? She Slow goes, down. "How the how the fuck did you get here in the first place?" And I'm like, and it scared me for a little bit. I'm like, hustling. Yeah. And she goes, do you know any other human being that's gone this far just fucking hustling? That without like being dirty or anything like that. I'm like, yeah. all right, I guess I don't got to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to work out on something else. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I, uh, you're absolutely right. I felt like after I, I needed to be somebody because I, I was, I was a vet. Now yeah. what? Yeah. You know, and when I realized that I don't have to be anybody but but myself and what I want to do in my life, then everything slowly started clicking. Yeah. I mean, that's after that I I started surfing, and I started competitively surfing. So you know stuff like, and then right after that, if I'm correct, I started my nonprofit, and it just slowly things just started, just, things started started, started working. At, yes, yeah. absolutely. So once I realized that I don't have to be anybody, I can just be myself. You know? yeah, I think that's what people what? struggle with, man. I think people struggle with like trying to pre- uh, rush into figuring themselves out immediately. Like, oh, I have to do this. Like, this. Yeah, is no, me. no. Yeah. See, and a lot for a lot of things and a lot of people, I feel like money dictates a lot of that. Sure. You know, and and, and that's when you start building dreams for somebody else. So yeah. all I all I can ever say is I I hope you guys are making the best out of your time. I mean, even though this time is long, it's really, really short. Yeah. You know, and we got to make the best out of it for us, not for anybody else. We're just doing what we want to do, you know? Yeah. That means enjoying it every single day of our lives. That means loving the ones around us and wanting to be there, you know? Yeah. So that's that's all I can ever tell people is just that's your best case scenario is going to be you wanting to be loved, wanting to love others, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the why why is it that we have such a hard time like when we get out like what is it I know a lot I, I get a lot of different answers obviously like I um, some people are alone feel alone uh, some people like like we were saying don't know what they're gonna do it's I am gonna say this too a lot of people feel like they're the only ones that are in pain yes you know you know yes. and, and I I was one of those humans that I had to get away from the, oh, well, I have more pain than he does. Why the fuck is he crying? Yes. You, that's you a know, big thing. like, uh, and that goes to the mentality of us being in the military. That's such a man big the thing. fuck up. Man the, man fuck, the fuck up. up. Nobody yep. cares. 
Yeah. Exactly, you know? And no, everybody does care. We're yeah. all fucking in pain, man. Yeah. Someone's knees hurt. Someone's back, back is hurting, yeah. you know? Like, trust me, yeah. someone's back is really hurting. Yeah. You know? They sh- it shouldn't be hurting this much when you're this old. <laughs> exactly, you know? And and that's the biggest thing is the fact that we always feel like we're, we're, we're in this pain on our own. When in reality, we are all in pain. Yeah. You know, we're we're constantly, oh, this aches, this hurts, this this doesn't feel good. If I wouldn't have lifted this hundred pound bag, yeah. You know, <laughs> I didn't have to know. run with the full combat load, maybe yeah. I'd be okay, you know, like and, and I think that's the biggest problem for us is that a lot of us feel like we're alone in this pain and we can't say anything because someone else is gonna say, Man the fuck up. Or or you know? or somebody's gonna say I had it worse. That's a I exactly. That, I think yeah, the veteran, that's a I big thing. That's where we're fucking up in the veteran community, and not like yes. you know just us specifically, but I think it, in general there's a big part of the veteran community that is like, well, I qualified with iron sights. You you yeah. sorties don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You sorties don't For know sure. what is challenging. You know, like it's For like sure. no, dude. Like you gotta try to not see it just from your own point of view. Like people deal with different shit differently and. You know, I think that's a big toxic trait of our community, which it seems to be, it seems to be kind of fading or people seem to be working against it now. Like myself, like yourself, like, uh, come back to combat. That's another, uh, veteran helping, uh, uh, page blog. Um, there's a lot of people trying to do better now instead of just shaming people or like, uh, talking shit on what they've done or what they haven't done. See, and that's what I mean by putting the mask on first. Um, I wouldn't be able to do all this if it wasn't for me to n- knowing that I had a problem right. and knowing that I was working to fix my problems, you know? Because right. even through all of this, I I was super vocal and transparent through my whole page. There was times where I felt depressed and I would post it up there and I would tell people like, yo, you know, I'm feeling depressed. It's It's not that I'm trying to kill myself. It's just that I don't. I don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel like being on this planet today. That doesn't mean I don't want to be here tomorrow. It doesn't want to mean I don't want to be here in a couple hours. It just means my day probably started off a bit shitty and that's just what I'm taking out of it, you know? So I, I feel like transparency has been a big key for me in my role playing with helping others. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the consistency that I will continue to have with everybody that, I'm going to just be as transparent as possible. I mean, I fail constantly. I'm constantly trying to become a better human of myself because I'm constantly afraid of going back into depression, afraid of falling back into my old bad habits, you know, yeah. falling back into the why me yeah. instead of the, I got this shit, we, let's go, you know. How, how often so. would you say that that, that those sort of demons try to come back at you you know like how like, and, and what are the steps that you take when you do start feeling that way you know what um lately it's been less and less but one thing i've been practicing is just positivity so before like i've been practicing um not using hate i don't like to use the word hate in my vocabulary anymore because it's a very very strong word it is and and it's very negative and if you have hate for something like you that means you have a hate in your heart yeah you know so i i try to practice the same way with myself so before i start telling myself i'm a fucking idiot or you're too stupid or anything like that i reassure myself well well i made a mistake i'm not gonna do it again guess what we're gonna move on and be a better human instead of being like oh you fucked up like you did this like you know we're not in the military anymore. I why know, the fuck do I have to put myself so in the hard. You know? That mentality is so hard why to do, why do, So that's that's the one thing that I, I practice. That's why I practice it daily. Yeah. So I practice not saying the word hate. I don't, I don't say it anymore. And if I do, I yeah. say I'm sorry. And then I say I dislike. Yeah. You know, so I, I practice little things like that because when it does come time for those demons to try to kick up, they ain't gonna happen anymore. I'm just like, ah, get out of here. Yeah, like, there's I, not negativity you know? for them to claim. Yeah, on, yeah, right? exactly. You know, and there's nothing for them to bang on because at the end of the day, like, even if I, I've lost many competitions. I'm trying to be number one, and I've lost tremendously, time after time after time after time again. But I won't give up because I know if I give up, then that means I lost. Yeah. I lost for reals. You know. 
Sounds but if like I continue going. on, yeah. one day I'm going to hit that shit, you know? Yeah. And then I'm going to be able to say I'm number one. And yeah. guess what? That journey that fucking allowed me to do all those mistakes, all those fails or mm-hmm. whatnot, I'm going to go back and return and be like, damn, that was all good, positive Those stuff. were all experiences, experiences that you learned from and just moved forward. You know, like I take pictures of my fuck ups even now, like with with my podcast, uh, with this. Anytime I fuck up, I try to like remember it. Like I, I've, I've taken okay. a picture of like new stickers that I'm making and I fucked them all up. And I'm like, God damn it. Here's money, you know, thrown away. <laughs> yeah. Like, I try to like, I, I'll, I'll keep like, for example, the our first, my first stickers, dude, terrible, not waterproof, just destroyed. <laughs> Right, and then like uh, you know, we're looking a little better. Getting better. You know, it's yeah. like, and I and I'm not gonna take this off because it's gonna show me like. That's where you started. Step that's one. The, that's the yeah. Step that's, one. That was your foundation. Yeah. You know, like, and that's what people forget. If you don't build a strong foundation, and when you get to the top of it, it's, it's gonna all gonna come down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all the little things that you do throughout your day and every single day. You know, yeah. you're not gonna fight depression in one month and be like. I'm depression free for the rest of my life. No, it's it's the little battles that you continue to win on a daily basis. Exactly. Like this morning, I woke up at five this morning. I went and go and do my chest workout. Guess what? Yeah. I'm free to do whatever the fuck I want for the rest of the day because right here, I won. You, you already got it. You, you know? already got your, yeah. your W for the day. Check you know? Oh, and if you want to add a little bit more, I won in stocks this morning. So check two. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> hustling. You know. Man. Yeah, so it's at the end of the day, it's it's the little steps, yeah. and that's what I've started to realize. It's we're not gonna win this battle, because it's a fucking war. Yeah, you know, yeah. We we gotta make sure that the war is won. The battles we're gonna win and lose them, mm-hmm. but as long as the war is won, shit, yeah. we ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, as long as we keep you going, know? you know. And the best way I could tell you too is sometimes we gotta be on top of our other brothers too. Oh, you know, sure. like us in life like especially the ones that are feeling good we got to make sure we look back and make sure everybody else is feeling good yeah so be aware of your surroundings you know when you are with your brothers and your sisters put the fucking phone down yeah you haven't seen them in a long yeah. time you know so I, that's what i like to tell people like remember what the fuck you're there for remember you're there to love someone else you're not there to love the phone no you're you got that shit with you all the time you're good yeah you know so try to just be there in the moment and be with them and just Try to see if they need you a little bit more than what you think. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I get this a lot from when I'm talking to people on the podcast here. Uh, people who haven't necessarily um, completely overcame their struggles, right? Because a lot of people are still dealing with their shit even, you know, a, a lot. Because a lot of them oh, have, yeah, have been out, uh, not, That's why I say depression is in a one-time oh, thing, sure. you know? We're yeah. constantly fighting. Right. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of them are like, man, you know, this made me want to reach out to to my friends and it's like good you should it's like because you never know you never never and they might seem okay but you never know they might yes. be struggling like, exactly you just never know and uh, and those are challenges that i think we can help each other overcome you know um, absolutely and i mean that's why we're doing this that's yeah. why when you invited me i was like vet let's do this let's this is how it. we're going to continue to help each other you know yeah yeah definitely and um uh, we'll get one more thing here um uh, well i guess two more things right so, uh, some of the things that you that you recommend is you know try to keep those negative thoughts away. Don't don't really focus on negative language. I guess that helps you um, when it comes to fighting your demons. Um, any other things that really worked out for you? Yeah. Um, if you're too busy thinking about the past and the future, then you're not busy enough moving your body. Exercise is a big key for releasing stress, releasing depression, um, any kind of exercise, any, any kind of exercise, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I suggest you start moving the body because the body needs to release lactic acid. It needs to release all that tension that you have in there, you know, and if you're just so caught into the past and the future and you're so worried about the things that you've gone through that you're not moving your body and it's shutting down on you, you got to start moving it. And I promise you, you're going to have way less time to think about all your demons. Yeah. It's not that you're throwing them in the back of your head. It's just that you're going to start realizing that it's in the past. Yeah. And we can't do anything about the past. 
But guess what? We could work on the future by working on us now. Yeah. You know, so that's what another key key component is moving the body, is being able to exercise. Um, feel remember, good about yourself, you know what I mean? That's yes, important. absolutely. You thing. have to feel good. Yeah. 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 You know? You can't, so you that's can't hate, who, like, the vessel that you're in, and then it, it's just not going to help you. It's just not Well, this is what I tell people. What happens 10 years from now when you're wanting the help and you can't? Because yeah. you're in the hospital or you're fucking seven feet under already. Yeah. You know, it's just reality. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, no, but no, no. Yeah. fuck, diabetes, heart attacks, like all kinds of random stuff because of the way we decide to eat. Oh, yeah. Like the way we treat our bodies. Like we don't, we don't, we don't take care of this vessel. Like you said, you yeah. know, we got to move the vessel in order for us to be able to feel good or like actually do good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it doesn't just it doesn't it doesn't just come on its own. You're, you're not. No, no, no. You have to put the work in. Yeah. In everything, everything, in everything, you have to put in the work. Everything, and yes. I know it's hard, and I know sometimes you don't. I, there's some days I don't fucking want to get up. I don't. There's some days I don't want to fucking. And and I'm like, I literally dig into my brain and I'm like, get up, you little bitch. You know. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, get. That's up. the only time when the fucking talking shit to yourself comes in handy. Yeah. Like, like let's go. You, you, yeah, what the fuck is your problem? Yeah. You know, you can do this. Yeah, you gotta accomplish some things today. Yeah. Come on, like exactly. Can, there's some days I don't do anything, and this and is, that's okay too. Yeah. That's that's okay too because sometimes we need to take a day to ourselves to just say, ah, let's relax. I know. I, I have know? such a hard time balancing that moment. For me, that's my hardest part. Like I'm like, oh, I want, I gotta do this. I gotta do this for the. I gotta do this for Vetiview. I gotta clip these things. I gotta do all these things. And that's where I, I personally need to work on um, taking time for myself. I need to just take time and just fucking chill, you know, relax, go work out, go and not worry about this for like a day. Right. And just. Yeah. yeah that's, or a couple of hours at least. Yeah. While you are working out, you just focus on working out, you know, yeah. while you're eating, you just focus on eating. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, don't just keep don't, your mind busy on that yeah. specific thing. Give it a break. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly. one thing I need to do personally for sure. Um, but um, is there anything else that you want to say to the people before we, we before we let you go and go on your day? Yes, absolutely. Um, first off, I want to thank you for having me and be able to share my story with you. Of course, man. And second off, I want to remind the world that anything, anything is possible in this lifetime. As long as you are breathing, you can absolutely do anything, anything you want in this life. Um, I was told I would never be able to walk again. I was told I'll never live the life that I had, and they were absolutely right. I'm not walking. I'm flying. Hell yeah, dude. And they're absolutely right. I don't live the life that I used to have. I live a better life now. So every single day is an absolutely blessing, and I'm just here to take advantage of it every single day. And I hope you guys are making the best out of it to make your lives a better place, and not only your lives, but the world around you, your community, your friends, your family. Because remember, if you can change the life of one, then that one person will continue to change the life of one other human being. And then it's just a snowball effect. On. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Those, those, that's, that's great shit. Great motivation. Great attitude to have towards life. Um, I appreciate you coming on again, dude. Thank you. It's, it's honestly been my pleasure to have you on. Um, you want to send me your Instagram, some information. But everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate you joining us. And I hope you... Uh, got something out of his story. Um, thank you again for doing what you're doing for your nonprofit. I think it's fucking awesome. And uh, we'll be catching you guys on the next episode, all right? Peace, man. Thank you.